everyone, welcome to my channel. There are so many of you who are new around here, so it's very, very nice to have you and I'm happy to be able to help you learn about e-commerce and Amazon FBA selling. For those of you who don't know me as well, I'm Abby. Obviously, I have been an Amazon seller for going on six years this year, which is insane, and I have made a lot of money on Amazon, but before I ever became successful at Amazon selling, I did make a lot of mistakes. And in this video, I wanna tell you a little story about a mistake that I made that was easily preventable, but because I didn't think it mattered as much, I overlooked it and it cost me a lot of money and I'll explain how it all went down. But in the meantime, if you do enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to continue teaching you and helping you learn how you can make this money online. It's like the wild, wild west on Amazon and I just think there's so much opportunity. So that is what all my platforms are dedicated to, which is helping you guys learn how to do this as well and as easily without making the same mistakes that I did. And we gonna talk about it, honey. <laughs> so with that, let's jump right in to this horrible mistake I made that cost me thousands of dollars. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a little bit of a journey back. Me in 2019, I would have been 25 years old. I had already launched two products on Amazon. I launched a nail file and a nail buffer. I do have a video on here showing you what I think went wrong and everything with that first product, as well as my second fill product on Amazon, which was a cuticle pusher as well as a cuticle oil. So those are my first two products, lost money with both. Now, the third product that I sold on Amazon was my first winning product. When I say winning product. I mean one that was profitable for me. And the thing with this product is that at the time that I was selling the product, I did my research and I really tried to improve upon what I think I did wrong with the first two products. And what I identified to be the reason those products failed was the fact that there was too much competition, meaning that there were too many other sellers that had high reviews. So when I launched my products, yes, people wanted my products because they were in demand, but the competition was stiff. There were so many other sellers who had reviews in the thousands and I could not compete with them without spending tons of money on ads. And the problem with spending tons of money on ads is that that eats into your profit. So even if you're making sales, it's possible that you're not actually making money, if that makes sense. So that was the problem that I encountered. So with this third product, I really start to think, how can I find a lane where there are just not that many you know, sellers with high reviews so that when I launch my product, it's not gonna look like, you know, so drastic of a difference. That's like, you know, someone who plays Pee Wee basketball going up against Shaq. You know, if you have to put your money on who's gonna win, you're gonna bet on Shaq because he's huge and he's got experience and he's been in the NBA, right? You just, you're gonna instantly gravitate towards that one. So that was a weird analogy, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that you don't want to try to compete where you really cannot compete. You've got to find your own lane where there's space for you. So long story short, I end up finding this product and I feel really good about it. I'm feeling really confident and I end up contacting the supplier and I say, hey, I really want to sell this product. I'd like to have my own label put on the product and I would like to you know, start selling it with my own logo on there. They say, don't worry, dear, that's great. We'll be happy to help you. I tell them the colors of my brand. I'm telling them, you know, it's gold and black and white. And I'm really going for kind of like the luxe high end version so that I can price it higher. So I'm letting them know my whole vision for this product and what I want it to be. And I wanted to do a bundle, but my bundle was very simplistic. I had the main product and then I had the accessory to the main product. So it was just two items in one small box. This was a tiny item, guys, like this big. So I like the thought of having something that was going to be really tiny, really lightweight, easy to ship, easy to fulfill orders. I didn't have to worry about the weight or anything like that. So I already know off the top that my margins, my profit margins are going to be really high. So I'm super excited about the product. I'm talking with them. I'm describing what I want. I'm asking them what the formula is. I'm asking what's the consistency because it was a liquid. I'm asking them about how they can customize the box for me. I even have the box designed by a free freelancer on Fiverr, which is very easy to do on Fiverr.com. And I sent them the box design and, you know, they 
made it and they were sending me videos and photos. So I was feeling really, really confident about the product and the supplier that I worked with. I felt very blessed that I felt like they were going to be great to work with in the future. And so everything's rolling. And I remember that I had read somewhere about something called an inspection. And I'm thinking an inspection, I don't really know what that means. I don't know if it's necessary. So I did some very brief research on it. And what I learned is that a third party inspection is something that you can pay for so that you basically hire someone who's in China to go and look at the products for you. But I'm thinking, well, they're sending me photos, they're sending me videos. I feel like they're doing a good enough job. I don't need an inspection. Plus, who wants to pay an extra hundred dollars for an inspection, right? So me, I'm kind of like penny pinching in my mind because I'm coming off of the loss of those two Vail products. And so I'm just thinking, whatever, I'm just going to skip it. I feel good about it and it's not a big deal. Even with all of that being said, I still made sure that I paid my supplier with PayPal. I could either do PayPal or I could do a wire transfer or I could do a bank transfer. And I highly recommend that you stay away from those forms of payment. Do not do a wire transfer. You get no protection as the buyer. But with PayPal or Alibaba trade assurance, you do get that extra protection. And so I ended up going with PayPal. There was a bit of a fee with that. And my supplier agreed to split the fee with me which made me really happy so that I didn't have to pay for the whole thing. And if you encounter this, just as a side note, best practice, if your supplier does not want to process the payment with PayPal, most of the time it's because of that fee. So if you can give them peace of mind that you're going to go half with them or that you'll fully cover the fee, they really will have no reason to not you know, accept PayPal as a form of payment. But Alibaba Trade Assurance is very similar. They offer something called Alibaba buyer protection, I believe is what it's called, which basically is just like PayPal buyer protection. So if something goes wrong, you'll be able to file a dispute and essentially get your money back. So those are ways to protect yourself. So that's what I did. And I ended up getting my products. They did it pretty quickly. However, what I will say is that it took a little while for the products to arrive to the fulfillment center. And so with all of that happening, I started to get a little bit nervous because it's getting closer to Chinese New Year or Spring Festival. For those of you who are not in business or do not have partners overseas in China, Spring Festival is a very, very big deal. It's like what Christmas is to us in the US or New Year's and Easter, all of that put together in one would be like Spring Festival. So it's a very, very huge holiday and all of the suppliers, all the factory workers, everyone has time off, which I personally think is a great thing. Everyone deserves you know, time to see their family, but what that means on the customer side as someone who you know buys from these companies is that they are not going to be reachable for a good week or two. Sometimes they're away for even longer. So three weeks, maybe even a month. I think that's a bit excessive. But yeah, definitely for a good like week or two, you might not be able to get in touch with them. And so my products end up coming and immediately my product is selling like hotcakes. Like I literally bought this product for about it was less than two dollars honestly i think it was like a dollar fifty or so it was very very cheap and my original selling price on amazon i want to say was $8.99. I started to sell it for way more than that though. I think I started low so that I could increase the price as time went on. So it was just under $10, I believe at first. And once the product was selling fast, like within the first few days, I increased the price to $11.99. I remember for sure, $14.99. And I think the maximum I sold it for was like $17.99. I couldn't really go too much higher than that simply because of where my competitors were. Of course, you can sell higher, but you can't be at 20 and everyone else is at 10. You know, that's too big of a difference. So I am so happy. I literally remember being at happy hour with one of my coworkers when I was at my corporate job. And I'm looking and I'm just like, wow, this product is like doing amazing. And I remember even telling him and he was like, wait, what do you do? You're selling on Amazon? Okay, that's cool. You know, like he was happy for me, but he had no clue what I was talking about. But I'm seeing the orders come in. And I'm like, wow, it's finally working for me after losing the 5k with the first product 2k with the second product, I'm finally going to be in the green, you know, it all worked out. 
he spoke too soon. So, so what ended up happening is within a couple of days, I start to get negative reviews. And I think I could even ask my mom because I remember calling her and I was like, mom, I am getting all of these bad reviews on my Amazon product. And she's like, why do you think that's happening? And I'm like, I have no clue, but I was so delusional that I refuse to believe that there was actually something wrong with the product. I'm thinking my competitors are trying to sabotage me. These are, you know, the other sellers buying my product and leaving me bad reviews so that they can hurt my listing because they see that I'm doing really well. And then I was like, let me do a little bit more research. Let me see for myself what is going on with these products. I remember distinctly sending my mom two of them. I sent my sister two of them, my best friend two of them, and I ordered two of them to myself. And we were all over the country. I was in Atlanta. My mom was in Maryland, I believe, at the time. My sister, I think, was in New York. So everyone, and even my boyfriend at the time, he was living in California. And he ordered some of my products to help me try to figure out what's going on. So everyone is getting their stuff. And I remember my mom and my sister were like, yeah, everything's fine. My boyfriend was like, yeah, one of them's actually kind of crusty. And I was like, wait a minute, crusty? And then I started to think, well, maybe there really is an issue with the quality of this product. So then I started to think, well, maybe people that are in colder places, something is happening to the formula. So it's like crusting over or solidifying somehow. I'm trying to come up with every reason in the book to make it make sense until finally I just have to accept that the product is not good. And what made me come to that realization is that someone left me a review with a video. And in that video, you can clearly see them trying to open up the bottle and it is crusty. Like they're struggling to open it. And it's supposed to be a liquid. Once again, it is rough. Like it's not even a liquid. It's a solid at this point. I'm like, okay, there's no way that this many people are lying about it. There's no way my, my competitors are going this hard to try to sabotage me. And that is how I just had to accept it. Like, okay, something's wrong with this quality of the product. So now I reach out to my supplier and I'm like, Hey, I'm getting all these bad reviews. I'm sending them screenshots because I'm actually really upset about this. And they are away because it's Chinese New Year. So I don't hear back from them for about a week. I'm panicking because I've got, you know, this product that people very clearly want. And if the quality was where it needed to be, I would be making so much money. But obviously, every time I'm getting a negative review, it is hurting my rating on Amazon. And so now instead of people seeing the product, being willing to overpay for the product realistically, and they're looking at the reviews and now they don't want to buy it because the quality is not good according to the other reviews. So I'm trying to get this figured out ASAP. So finally my supplier gets it back to me and she's like, no dear, nothing's wrong with the product. And I'm like, yes, there is. Look at all these reviews. And she's like, no dear, she's denying it, denying it, denying it. Like a little kid that you caught eating candy. She's like, no, 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 no. So I keep on pressing her. Normally me, I would just be like, okay, well maybe whatever, but no, this is my money on the line. And this is my product that has a lot of potential. And now I'm not able to reach the level I want to reach because of the quality of the product. So I was upset and I kept on pressing the issue. And finally, after a couple of days of me insisting that something is wrong, she finally admits to, admits to me what actually happened. And what ended up happening, you guys will never believe this. She told me that she ended up using half of a, the batch of old products and half of the batch was new product. So essentially they were trying to get rid of their old inventory. So they decided to mix in the bad with the good, hopefully so that it wasn't noticeable and that they could clear out that like expiring and old crusty inventory. And I don't even know why she admitted it. Maybe she was just tired of like denying it and knew I wasn't going to let it go, but she finally admitted it. And I was like, wow. Okay. So I was really, you know, mad about this. And I told her, you guys are going to have to remake the whole order and I'm not paying for it. <laughs> I don't know where I got the cojones to really, you know, come at her with that energy because I'm not a seasoned business person at this point. I don't really even know what leverage I have, but I'm telling them you're going to remake it and I'm not going to pay for it. And they're like, no, dear, we can't remake it because if we do, then we're literally losing money because we're making double the order and we only got paid for one order. And I said, well, the reason you have to remake it is because the first one that you did, you put bad quality product in there. And now my business is suffering from it. So we're going back and forth. She doesn't want to do it. And I finally just tell her, you know, 
what? I will just file a dispute with PayPal. And as soon as I said that, honey, she done changed her tone. She said, okay, well, you know, we can remake it for you. We won't charge you, but you'll just have to pay for shipping. I said, I'm not paying for shipping. Like I'm not paying for anything further. You're already hurting my business. And now I have to figure out a way to climb back up from these negative reviews. Um, sorry guys, I'm making sure that the camera doesn't cut off so I have a timer going. But anyway, this is basically your fault. So I'm not paying for the shipping and finally she agrees that they will remake it and ship it out free of charge to me. So I'm not happy but I'm satisfied with that because at least I'm going to get new inventory. Now what I have to figure out is what am I going to do with all of the bad inventory that is already at Amazon. And what ended up happening is that I had to literally pay to remove all of the product out of the Amazon Fulfillment Center. Mind you, I ordered 3,000 units of this product. And these products are all over the country, guys. It's not like all of them are in Dallas, Texas, and all they have to do is just grab them all, put them in a box, and send it to me. No, these products are in Connecticut. These products are in Florida. These products are in Washington State. These products are in Colorado. They're everywhere. And so literally for about a month, I am receiving boxes and boxes. Every time I go home from work, my nine to five, I'm stressed out and I pull up to my house and I see, not my house, my apartment, <laughs> but I see all of these boxes in front of my door and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's never ending. Not only did I have to pay for them to send the products back to me, but then I had to go through every box hand with my own hands box by box to check to see if it's a crusty one or if it's an okay one. And remember, it's 50-50. Half of them are bad, half of them are good. I don't know which one's which. So I'm having to go through, unbox it, unscrew it, see what it's looking like, screw it back on, put it back in the box, and then separate them into piles. Thousands of units, you guys. So not only am I having to do all of this extra manual labor that I did not sign up for, not only did I have to pay for the product to come to me, but now I'm also going to have to pay to send the good products back. And it was just, it was the most. Like as hyped up as I'm getting right now saying this, and as stressful as it probably sounds to you guys, just imagine what it was like at that time, just thinking, wow, if I would have just gotten an inspection, my inspector would have been able to see what was going on with this order. And I could have avoided all of this for a hundred dollars. I was sick when I really realized like, how could I have prevented this? Like, obviously it's not my fault that my supplier did that to me, but at the same time, it's my fault that I didn't do my due diligence. It's my business, it's my product, and I should have, you know, taken that extra precaution to ensure the quality of my products, especially when I'm going to be spending what, three, four thousand dollars on an order you want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to protect yourself. And I just really dropped the ball on it. So I was beating myself up for real, but eventually I did. Well, I actually had to hire someone off of TaskRabbit to come and help me because I was also getting ready to move to a new place at that time in a few months, but I was still trying to like, you know, figure things out. And it just, it was a lot. It was a lot of stress. And so I ended up going through everything. I sent back the ones that were good. And then my supplier made the new batch and also sent those directly to Amazon. So I ended up with having enough product. And that is one of my best selling products. But at the end of the day, I just think like, was it really worth it? That $100 or even if it's $200 that you saved, was it worth it for all of the headache, all of the hassle and trying to build my listing back up and bring it back up? I think I had a 2.5 star rating at a point. If you're an Amazon shopper, you know that is scary. Like no one is buying your product. If you have less than even like three and a half stars, it's going to be rough for you. So I had to work my way back up and really do a lot to build the listing up to where, you know, the reviews were acceptable. And I did eventually, but it was an uphill battle. And so the point of this entire story is one, always get an inspection done on your inventory, especially if it's your first time working with a supplier, you don't know what they're going to do and you cannot trust them. Not to say that they're definitely going to hurt you, but I'm just saying you want to make sure that you're doing your part to ensure that they don't have the chance. So that's what I will say there. Also always pay with PayPal or Alibaba Trade Insurance because if I didn't have that leverage of, well, I'm gonna file a dispute to get my money back, there's no way they would have agreed to 
you know, resolve the situation in a way that was fair to me. They would have just been like, well, it's not our problem. Sorry. You know? And I think that that was a one thing that I did right in this situation. I'm very grateful for that, but I want you guys to know as you're moving in this space and as you're learning, make sure that you are covering yourself as the business owner and taking responsibility for what you can control. And having an inspection is a very simple way to ensure that you're doing your part to protect your business. So there's more I could say and more details I could go into, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys this word of caution and a little bit of wisdom of, you know, something that I did wrong in the very early stages of selling on Amazon. And I know that now that you've watched this video, you're not going to make the same mistake that I did. So maybe it was all meant to be and that whole situation happened so that I could be here to tell you guys not to do what I did. So if that was the bigger picture and that was the purpose of it all, then I suppose I can live with it. But now you guys know, now you can do better than me. And you know, I'm just wishing you the best as you continue on this journey. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. Again, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.